Hi, this is the first video in the series where we're looking at the Edexcel foundation tier paper from June 2018. Um, like in previous papers, I've tried to keep these videos to about um, 20 to 30 minutes or so. Um, I would try to encourage you to please stop the video, have a go at each of the questions and then compare your solutions. Okay, so we're gonna walk, uh, we're gonna start with question number one, which deals with writing nine tenths as a decimal. Okay, so nine tenths of decimal, well, tenths is the first column after the decimal point so I would write that as 0 0.9 so this part is tenths nine tenths okay and then uh, question number two write 0 0.3 as a percentage well percentage basically means out of a hundred so if you like we can say that that's 0 0.30 and this is the hundredths column so we would write that as 30 percent OK, let's move on then to question number three. And it says, write the number 2,538 correct to the nearest hundred. Well, the hundreds column is actually this one here. OK, so what we're going to do is write to the nearest hundred would be 500. So that's going to be 2,500. OK, and then uh, question number four says here are the first four terms of a sequence. Uh, write down the next term in the sequence. Well, what you need to do really is look at each of these numbers and look for what's called the common difference. So the difference between two and nine is seven, it's actually add seven. Nine and 16 is add seven and 16, 23 is add seven. So the next number in the sequence, if I add seven, that's gonna be 30. OK, and then it says explain how you've got your answer. Well, basically what we've done is we've added seven each time. So you would just write a line that says something like this. OK, and that would be perfectly fine for one mark. OK, and then it says work out the tenth term of the sequence. Well, there is another way to do this, which is where we use what's called the common difference formula or the nth term formula. I'm not going to worry about that too much. I'm going to kind of do it more straightforward than that. I'm basically going to say, well, actually, I know the first term of the sequence is two because it tells me. Remember the sequence itself, this is the first term okay maybe it might be easier to say that's the first in the first place okay so in the second place I've got nine third place I've got 16 fourth place I've got uh, 23 the fifth place we worked out as 30 and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep adding seven to this so hopefully my arithmetic will help okay so sixth place I have 37 Seventh place, I'm going to say that's 44. Um, eighth place, well, that's going to be 51. Ninth place is going to be 58. And then the tenth place, which is the question that they're asking us for, is going to be 65. OK, so my answer would be 65 on that particular question. OK, hope that's OK for you. Um, let's move on then to question five. Um, and as I say, please do stop the video, have a go at these questions and then compare your solutions. So question number five, we've got here are four digits, use three of these digits. OK, be a bit careful with that. So I, I must admit the first time I did this question, I actually thought it was using all four, but <laughs> use three of these digits to write down the largest possible three digit number. OK, so just got to be a little bit careful with that. Well, um, the biggest number would be nine. So I'm going to make that 900. OK, and then I'm going to say, well, the next biggest number would be seven. So that would be 70. And then the next biggest number would be four. So my answer would be 974. OK. Right, part B of the question, we've got here are four different digits. Put one of these digits in each box to give the smallest possible answer to the sum. You must use each digit 
only once. Okay, well, you might want to just um, have a go at some calculations here just to make sure that you're okay with it. I actually came up with um, 18 and 26. Okay, that's 18 and 26. And if I add 18 plus 26 together, I get 44. The other alternative to that would be um, 16 and 28. So I could have had 16 and 28, and that also equals 44 as well. So it doesn't really matter which way around you have that. Um, in this particular one, I chose the first one. Uh, 18 plus 26. Okay, let's look at question number six. It says write down the factors of 30. Well, the factors are numbers that will divide into 30. Okay, so the first number that will divide into 30 is 1, and then I've got 2, and then I've got 3, 5, and 6. Okay, so all of those numbers will divide into 30 without leaving any remainders. I've also got 10, because 10 will go into 33 times, and then I've got 15 will go in twice, and 30 itself will actually go into 30 just the once. So that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, let's have a look then at question number seven, which is a little bit, um, little bit tricky maybe to work through. You just got to kind of um, try to, um, I guess start really with Nishat, because Nishat has got six cousins, okay, and then we've got to work sort of backwards from there to um, have a look at how many cousins David, Becky, ooh, Becky, <laughs> and Nishant have got. Well, we know Nishant has got six, okay, and then Becky has twice as many. So if Becky has twice as many co cousins as Nishat, then she's going to have... 12 and then David has twice as many cousins as Becky so David is going to have 24 cousins okay hope that's all right for you it's just a little bit of logical thinking that you've got to kind of start in this particular case really from the end of the question and then sort of work backwards through the question okay let's move on then to question number eight find the value of uh, it is a calculator paper so if you pop that into your calculator you should come up with 2.28 okay and then the second one find the value of and again pop that into your calculator be very careful about how you pop things into calculators make sure you put the the brackets and the squared in the correct place and you should come up with 2.5604 okay hope that's okay for you and let's move on then to looking at question nine which is a relatively um tricky timetable of a bus, bus routes, okay? The buses are going from uh, Bury to Manchester, okay? How many minutes should the 825 bus, which is this one here, okay? And it's gonna go from Bury, I think you pronounce it Bury or Bury, to <laughs> Manchester, okay? Um, there's a couple of ways in which you can do this. You could probably do this by mental arithmetic. I tend to prefer with these sorts of questions to err on the side of caution and use a, a number line. Okay, number lines always work for me because I can kind of visualize these things. So what I'm gonna say is I've got um, this bus that's leaving at 8.25. Okay, there it is, it goes at 8.25. And we know it's going to arrive at 9.05, and we've got to work out the number of minutes between the two. Well, if I add 35 minutes to this, I'm going to get 9 o'clock, okay? So that's another 35 minutes. And then to get to 9.05, when it arrives in Manchester, it's another plus 5 minutes, and here we are in Manchester at 9.05. So it's taken in total 35 plus five, which is 40 minutes. Okay, so the next part of the question is um, 
a little bit more challenging, okay? So again, I think it would be good for you to do exactly the same thing, to do this kind of number line, okay? Now, and again, we've got to sort of work backwards a little bit, okay? That uh, Daniel leaves his house at 8.45 in the morning, and he's got to get to work if he can by 10 o'clock, and he's got various different routes along the way to actually get there. Okay, well, um, let's again have a look at that number line. Okay, so here we are at 8.45 in the morning. Okay, and Daniel leaves the house. And it, it says it takes him 17 minutes. This is this part here, 17 minutes to get from his house to the bus stop. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little tick there just to say that I've done that, okay, and it's gonna take him 17 minutes, okay. Well, 17 minutes from 8.45 means he gets the bus stop at 9.02, okay. Now, let's have a look at what bus he can actually catch at the bus stop, okay. So remember that he is in Whitefield, so it's not the very first row, it's actually the second row here. So here he is in Whitefield. He's at the bus stop at 9.02, so he can actually catch the 9.04 bus, okay? So he's got two minutes extra to wait, and then he can catch the bus at 9.04 bus, okay? All right, well, the bus itself takes um, a little while to get to Manchester. Actually arrives in Manchester at 9. 35. So he's sitting on the bus, okay, and eventually he gets to nine, Manchester at 9.35, okay, and here he is standing at Manchester bus station, okay, and then it says he's got a 15 minute walk, or it takes 15 minutes to get from the bus stop in Manchester to work itself, okay? So again, I'm just gonna tick that a little bit to say that I've done it, okay? So he's gonna have another 15 minutes walk, okay? Here he is, plus 15 minutes, okay? And he's set off at 9.35, he takes 15 minutes to get there, so he gets to, into work at 9.50, okay, at work, okay? So the answer to the question is, yes, Daniel does get to work by 10 o'clock. He actually gets there 10 minutes early. Okay, so we are 12 minutes into the video. I'm gonna carry on for a little bit longer and see if we can work through question number 10. Okay, question number 10 is um, about uh, salary and rates of pay. Okay, so Bronwyn works in a restaurant. The table gives her rates of pay and she worked for a total of 20 hours last week. Eight of those hours were worked at the weekend. Okay, so show that Ron was paid less than 200 pounds. Okay, so let's have a look firstly at what happens during the week. Okay, well, during the week she's actually worked, so if we say here, we know she worked 20 hours, but eight of those were at the weekend. So actually during the week, she only worked, or so she only, she did work 12 hours. Okay, and for each of those 12 hours, she was paid £8.40, because remember on the table, it's Monday to Friday, so it's during the week, £8.40 per hour. Okay, so 12 times £8.40 means that for her weekly pay, she would have received £100.80. Okay, let's have a look now at the remaining weekend hours, okay? So at the weekend, we're told that she works eight hours, which is the eight hours that we took off there. So eight, and her weekend rate is, again, going back to the table, is £11.20 per hour. So I'm gonna multiply that by £11.20, oops, £11.20, and I'm going to get 89 pounds 60p okay if i then add that to her weekly earnings okay let's see if we get close to 200 pounds so that's going to be uh, a total is going to be 100.80 plus 89.60 okay and if i add those two together i'm going to get 190 pounds 40 okay so she was actually paid 
£190, £10 or so less than the £200. Okay, hope that's all right for you. Let's move on then to question number 11. Um, and please do, again, stop the video, have a go at each of these questions. Uh, this particular one, it says, last year the cost of a season ticket for a football club was £560. Crikey. Um, this year the cost of a season ticket has been increased to £600. Okay. <laughs> uh, write down the increase in the cost of a season ticket as a fraction of last year's cost. Uh, okay. All right. Well, fractional increase or, or increase, and this is a very good formula to remember, is increase, okay, equals difference divided by original, okay? So if you wanted percentage increase, you would just multiply this fraction by 100, okay? Or fractional increase, which is what we're being asked for at the moment, is um, it's just simply difference divided by original. So the difference between the two prices is going to be 40 pounds, and the original cost was 560, okay? And actually, that's sufficient. That does answer the question. Okay. Now you might um, you might consider just reducing this fraction down a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier to work with. Um, I haven't actually looked at the mark scheme, but I think forty out of five sixty is exactly right. Uh, but it might be just nice for you to simplify that a little bit to four over fifty six, or if you prefer. 1 over 8, and certainly if you're using a calculator, uh, 1 over 14, if you're using a calculator, that will do that for you. Okay, hope that's okay for you. Let's move on then to question number 12. And as I say, we are, well, we're 16 minutes into the video, so I'm going to hopefully aim for about 20 minutes um, on this. So I think we'll probably make this the last particular question. Okay, so. A diagram shows a scale drawing of a tennis court. Scale of drawings is 1 to 200. Work out, work out the perimeter, the perimeter of the real tennis court. Okay, so the first thing is, is that we need to measure this in centimetres. Now, there will be a difference between various different printers. And obviously when they make these papers, when they print these papers for the actual exam, then everybody gets the same copy. But in my particular case, I had this as 11.5. Okay, 11 and a half centimetres, and I had this as 5.8 centimetres. Okay, so if we were just looking at the perimeter in terms of uh, centimetres, okay, I would say then that we've got a little fella, here he is, okay, he's going to run all the way along there, okay, so he's going to run 11.5, then down here, across here, all the way back here again, so he's run all the way around the tennis court in order to uh, run around the perimeter. So he's run two lots of 11.5 centimetres, okay, plus two lots of 5.8 centimetres. That's going to give you 34.6 centimetres in terms of the actual drawing. But remember, we've got a scale factor of 200. OK, so um, we need to multiply this 34.6 by 200 and that will give us the real distance. But we're just going to be careful because it will give us the real distance in centimetres, 6920 centimetres. OK, and they have asked for the answer to be made into metres. So there are 100 centimetres in a metre. So we've got to divide this number by 100. So the actual answer will be 69.2 metres. OK, now uh, there is an allowance on um, the mark scheme for these sorts of questions and you, you need to be a little bit careful about your measurements but you know you've got something like plus or minus 10% on these sorts of questions. Okay well that's a good place to finish we're going to finish here at uh, question number 12 um, start again in the next video at question number 13 onwards. I hope you found it useful and um, please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything I'll always come back to you please subscribe to the channel and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video.